Hi, I'm Dan Schulman, the President and CEO of PayPal. I'm delighted to be with everybody on Facebook Live, and I'm thrilled to be with Satya Nadella, who is the CEO of uh, Microsoft, as all of you no doubt know. Now, you may not know that Satya is also a recent author um, of his new book, Hit Refresh, which is the quest to rediscover Microsoft's soul and imagine a better future for everyone. So I recently read the book, such a, and, um, a, such a great uh, read, insightful, but you've been CEO for three years uh, now, and what made you decide to write a book in general and write a book now? First of all, thank you so much, uh, Dan, for having me. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's a great question because yeah. in some sense, who writes a book <laughs> three years or three and a half years into being a CEO? Uh, most business books, if you look at it, are written ex post as these right. great grand successes or grand failures. Right. Uh, I want to write about the process of transformation and change, which to me is a continuous process while going through it. Um, it's not about actually answering the questions. It is about dealing with the unanswerable questions yeah. uh, while you're going through them. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to be able to at least write the things down as I'm sort of meandering through that right. uh, process right, of right. change. And it's been interesting because it, it helps clarify certain things. Uh, it also sets the context for all the things that actually need to be done still. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, the amount of transformation that you've accomplished at Microsoft, both from a business model perspective, from a cultural perspective, has been remarkable in a short amount of time. But how did empathy become the focus uh, of the book? Because that really shines through as you read chapter after chapter. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I um, have come to internalize is that the, at the core of our businesses uh, is the need for innovation, of course. Yeah, of but course, where is, yeah. what's the real source of innovation? The real source of innovation is our understanding of our customers and their needs, right. and in particular, their unmet and unarticulated needs. Uh, that unarticulated piece is sort of the key word for me, because yeah. there is no way you're going to be able to get at it if you don't have a deep sense of empathy for what the customers want. Uh, and in, unfortunately, there isn't so anything called the uh, empathy button that you get in right. to turn on when you get to work. You have to be able to, in fact, take what life teaches each one of us, our personal passions, our personal understanding of people around us, an increasing understanding of people around mm -hmm. us, and bring it to work. Uh, because any, some small business on, you know, that you've dealt with and you resonate with uh, is someone you can have impact at Microsoft because of what we do, or a consumer, right. uh, or even a large multinational or a public sector organization. So that opportunity to unlock what I think is innate in all of us, which is having empathy for people around us and communities around us, and put it into the context of business. And that's why I think that this is not like uh, something you do outside of work, but I think it's actually existential for every business. Yeah. I often think about life is something that People often talk about work-life balance, and I think life is somewhat seamless. Right. You bring yourself into work, you bring life into your work, you bring your work into your life, and I think if you're passionate about what you're doing, if you have empathy, um, as, as you talk about it, if you have a real uh, passion for serving customers uh, and making a difference, you attract the best employees um, as well. Right. I mean, they want to work at a company that has that. You also have um, a great um, uh, um, philosophy that comes across, which is how do we transform Microsoft, and Microsoft being one of the world's most successful companies for the longest time, but that often gets in the way of future success as well. That past success gets in the way of future success, ironically. Right. And so, you talk about the transformation of Microsoft as moving from know-it-alls to learn-it-alls. And can you talk a little bit about that and how you learn from your customer and what, what you yeah. mean by that? I mean, I think you're right because what happens when you're a successful company is the novel idea or the concept that you have 
the capability you have to actually build it or deliver it, and the culture. They're all in this beautiful virtuous lock. Right. right? Everything right. reinforces right. and your business is growing. Everyone loves you. Uh, and then what happens is, is something that every business uh, will face, which is the novel idea you started with runs out of gas. Right. Uh, you now need the culture and capability to have come up with a new idea. That's when it matters, because long before mm -hmm. it's conventional wisdom, yeah. Yeah. your culture right. has to enable it. And that's where this know-it-all and learn-it-all is the real difference maker. Because to me, uh, I took inspiration from, in fact, work that Carol Dweck did in child psychology yep. with mindset uh, and applied it and said, okay, if, what would it mean for a large organization like ours uh, to have a growth mindset? And it turns out that if you have this posture of know-it-all, which is easy to have because you've been yep. successful, yep. Uh, then the ideas that have to come next in order to foster new growth are not going to happen. And so you have to transform yourself from being this know-it-all to learn-it-all. Uh, and I think that challenge uh, is sort of simple to frame but very tough. Uh, because every new idea, especially at a time when you have the first thing that's still very successful, looks like a dumb idea, right. except that transitions are fairly binary. Yeah. Well, I think the reason that makes it so difficult, from my perspective, is you have to have a lot of confidence to say out loud, I don't know yeah. everything. I mean, it's incredibly obvious that none of us know everything, but people tend to want to say, oh, I know that. Yeah. I got that. And saying I need to learn more about that is seen sometimes as weakness, but it's really strength. Uh, right. I mean, and especially in our industry, uh, I mean, we have some of the smartest people who come now uh, yeah. to our industry. And, and of course, the, e everyone should pride themselves uh, of their depth of understanding right. and their comp uh, competence and what have you. But I think that showing that vulnerability, uh, which is hard yeah. for us as Very humans hard. in yeah. general, uh, I think is going to be key to unlocking. And that's kind of the connection I'm trying to draw, which yeah. is uh, this is not like, okay, you want to do this just to you know, feel nice. I think that that unlock is core to innovation. Because if you're not, to your point, how do you, take, you, how do you teach someone to say, I'll take risk? Uh, exactly. There is no way. Exactly. Uh, because when you are, by definition, you're vulnerable. Uh, yeah. And so that means you have to be able to sort of uh, create an environment in which people are able to learn yeah. Uh, there's no, as somebody said to me, you know, there's no fun in failure, but if you learn from failure and yet your percentage is up in terms of your ability to hit success, then that's everything. Yeah. And that ability, I think, is what we are all in the quest to get go discover. Couldn't agree more. I think people always talk about innovation, and there's some, you know, holy grail around innovation. And I think we need to push for innovation. We need to push for how do we evolve our businesses going forward. But innovation is a two-edged sword. Real innovation involves risks. Yeah. There's no question about that. So why don't we do this, Sajo? Uh, one of the great things about Facebook Live is we get to go to the audience uh, and uh, have them ask us some questions. And so our first question comes in from Pierce. Mm -hmm. So Pierce asks us, mm -hmm. what's the biggest challenge of being a CEO? Do you want to take that first? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, for me, um, I think the one thing that I've come to realize uh, is how multi-constituent our uh, jobs are. I used to think oh, it's about customers and then yeah. partners and it's about investors yeah. and it's about employees. It's about all of them, but it's all the communities and the governments every in every part of the world all the time. So being able to harmonize these multiple constituent interests uh, is something that I think is super important. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I always think that um, leadership is defined as sort of two things, define reality and inspire hope. Those are the things that I think that are critical, critical for great leaders to do. Neither are easy to go do. If you just inspire hope yeah. and you don't define reality and a path towards that hope, people think you're a naive optimist. Right. But if you only talk about reality, you know, you're not inspiring your employees, your customers, all these constituencies about what could be. And it's that uh, being able to define both and the pathway between them to me that I think is crucial for success uh, for any company. That makes sense. One thing I was going to ask you, Dan, I mean, in terms of talking about this hit refresh moments, yeah. if you had to reflect uh, even in PayPal's own uh, transformation that yeah. you've driven, yeah. how, how would you characterize that? 
So I would say it has been one of critical reflection, I think is the best way of thinking about it. You mentioned this in our conversations before. Um, it, the best time to change is when you are being successful. Right. But it's also the most difficult time because people basically say, don't touch anything. <laughs> it's all working well. But you know that, to your point, that things run their course and then they start to decline. And so really having a very honest conversation about what value could we provide to different segments of the market, defining an expansive mission and vision, which for us is democratizing financial services. It's a great mission because we can make a real difference. Technology can actually work on that and we have mm -hmm. a platform to enable us to do that. But once you define that, then the cultural change that goes around that is also a very difficult thing to do. And I think we've had to sit back and challenge ourselves um, and really push ourselves. And there's a great saying in martial arts, uh, and, and you know I do that yeah. all the time, which is uh, never stand still. Because if you stand still, you're asking to be hit uh, <laughs> in a fight. And so we really try to live up to that uh, philosophy. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Well, Sajid, thank you so much uh, for being here. It's always a delight and a pleasure. And uh, Likewise. Thank, thank you. you so much, Dan. Okay. Thank you.